Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Cobert, and today's episode is the Pittsburgh Steelers draft class. Starting with the first pick of the draft, T.J. Watt, uh, defensive end slash edge rusher uh, from Wisconsin. Uh, from a production standpoint, he scored 86.18 when it comes to solo tackle market share, 76.76 when it comes to sack market share, and 80.28 when it comes to tackle for loss market share. Uh, all those marks hit Pro Bowl level production markers, and then when it comes to athleticism, he scored 84.76 in terms of explosiveness, 68.40 when it comes to speed for his size, and 96.82 when it comes to flexibility for his size. So this is a player that has Pro Bowl production with Pro Bowl athleticism, and in particular has elite level flexibility for his size. That's a good pick, and I, I don't really have anything else to say. Uh, you know, I do understand there's some concerns on the fact that he only had one year of production in his career, you know, and he was also a guy that kind of had to, you know, find his position. He wasn't a guy who immediately took to playing defensive end. Uh, but I do think that there's enough positives here from a production standpoint and from an athleticism standpoint that he has the potential to be a very, very impactful player at the next level. Uh, then we get to the next pick of the draft for the Steelers in Juju Smith-Schuster, wide receiver out of USC. Uh, when it comes to his production, he scored 92.55 when it comes to the passing yardage market share production, which is five-time All-Pro level. I mean, that is, mm, you know, high-level uh, market share production. And then when you get to his age, he scored 99.91 when it comes to his age score. Uh, he... He's really young and he was really productive. These are all positive marks. And then when you get to his athleticism, he scored 72.68 when it comes to explosiveness for his size, 77.2 when it comes to speed for his size, and 88.43 when it comes to flexibility for his size. I got nothing bad to say from a data perspective. Um, from a film perspective, I would say that Juju Smith is a little misleading because his film isn't as good as his production and his age really shows up on film in terms of inexperience and in terms of just not understanding fully what he needs to do uh, from a route running standpoint and in the sense that he does understand wide receiver technique he does understand what he needs to do to you know set opponents up and you know do stuff like that but he just doesn't on a strategic level implement these things in a in a effective way so it's kind of like a, a pass rusher that knows how to do a spin move but does a spin move on third and two uh, or does a spin move on an obvious rundown you know like that's not very effective in that situation and that's very much what like what Juju Smith Schuster's film is is he's a wide receiver who understands wide receiver technique he understands how to get off press he understands how to do all this stuff like he has the technique to do these things but he doesn't know how to fundamentally implement it in a dynamic way on the football field and that's my only issue when it comes to Juju Smith Schuster from a film film perspective from a data perspective um, there's nothing wrong here um, you know he, he has the potential to be an all-pro wide receiver but based on the film I would say that it's a it's a huge projection you know to say that he you know can can get higher up than those sort of things so that's something I would say is the last sort of note is I think he's more of a project that people realize despite the age production and the other sort of stuff then we get to the next pick of the draft for the Steelers and Cam Sutton uh, cornerback out of Tennessee when it comes to his production he scored 53.64 in terms of solo tackle market share 95.77 when it comes to pass flexion market share production is great Nothing else I can really say. His big issue, though, is with athleticism. He scored, only scored 34.30 when it comes to his uh, uh, explosiveness, 42.07 when it comes to speed, and 38.24 when it comes to flexibility for his size. That's not getting it done when it comes to high-quality outcomes. Despite the, flat, the fact that he hit Pro Bowl-level solo tackle market share and Pro Bowl-level passive flexion market share, none of that really matters if you don't hit the athletic marks that you need to hit. Uh, so... I think best case scenario with Cam Sutton, you have a cornerback that can be a slot defender and that sort of mold, like an AJ Bowie, you know, kind of player. And I think he could fit that role well. But if this is a player that you 
you know, think is going to become like an elite cornerback that you can line up against Julio Jones and, you know, go up against all the top players at any point in his career. I just don't think that's going to happen. I don't, I don't think he's ever going to uh, become a player who becomes extremely dynamic at the cornerback position uh, because he just doesn't have the athletic traits necessary uh, to fill that sort of issue. Uh, so that's the only big issue with Cam Sutton is just from an athletic standpoint, he just doesn't hit any high quality marks. And as a result, despite the fact that he was productive, it's just going to really limit him at the next level uh, when it comes to just his ability to match up with better athletes at the NFL level compared to what he was able to match up with at the college level. Then we get to the next pick of the draft for the Steelers and James Conner. Uh, in terms of production, he scored 79.76 when it comes to his uh, uh, you know, overall total offensive market share production, which is five-time Pro Bowl level. Uh, it's not bad at all in terms of his production, uh, but his issues really stem with athleticism. He only scored 34.51 in terms of explosiveness, 54.22 when it comes to speed, and only 50.70 when it comes to flexibility for his size. But there is some hope. The hope exists in the fact if you view him as a high-quality player, you will be disappointed. But if you view James Conner as a Ben Jarvis Green Ellis type of player, as a Jeremy Hill type of player, if you just view James Conner as you need to view James Conner as a running back who's tough, who can be an inside runner, who can do like he can do all the sort of tough things you want uh, from a committee back and a back that can, can become a starter. If you view him that way, you should not be disappointed. But if you view him as a guy that's going to become a pro bowler or, or going to become highly successful at the next level, I just don't think that's on the table with him from an athletic standpoint. He doesn't have the flexibility, especially of a all pro, uh, really high end running back as well. Uh, so that stuff's off the table. But if you're talking about a guy who could potentially become a starter for you down the road or at least be a very good committee back, I think that's exactly what James Conner is. And I think that that's why he's sort of a decent pick when it comes to that play. You know, which just comes to him in general, he's an okay pick because he has that potential. Then we get to the pick that I just, eh, I just don't like the pick. In terms of Josh Dobbs, quarterback out of Tennessee, uh, when it comes to his high school production score, he only had 23.66 out of 100. Uh, from the high school level, uh, you have to have at least a 69 or higher to become a long-term starter based on uh, every quarterback since the 2007 NFL draft class. And every single Pro Bowl quarterback had at least a, uh, a 80 or higher, actually, yeah, 84 or higher when it came to high school production. And Josh Dobbs didn't hit the starter level when it comes to high school production, and he didn't hit the Pro Bowl level when it comes to high school production. Uh, and when it comes to his actual college production, he scored 72.87 when it came to his collegiate uh, production score. And when it comes to that score, he only hit starter level when it comes to that sort of uh, area. So he didn't hit Pro Bowl or All Pro level when it comes to his college production score. That's just not good. When you don't hit the high school level, you don't hit the minimum amount of high school production you have to hit to be a long-term NFL starter. And then on top of that, your college production isn't really doing you any favors either in terms of high quality outcomes. I just don't think Josh Jobs is ever going to be anything significant at the NFL level. And I just think he's never going to be a long-term starter. Like this is the profile of someone that is just not going to be very good. So I understand that they have him as a backup and maybe that's what they're trying to do. But I just have to tell you guys again that there just isn't any potential for him to be a special player and there isn't any potential for him to be much of anything uh, when it comes to uh, a starter even based on his high school production. So he's a massive project. He's been a project since high school and it's not going to get any better at the NFL level. Then we get to Brian Allen, cornerback out of Utah. Uh, when it comes to his production, he only had 27.66 in terms of solo tackle market share, 34.06 in terms of pass flexion market share. He doesn't hit the solo tackle market share threshold he needs to hit for high quality outcomes he doesn't hit the pass deflection market share that he needs to hit for high quality outcomes age wise he only scored 15 out of 100 which is not good uh, but athleticism wise and this is probably why they drafted him I mean I'm just I know I'm th I'm throwing a Hail Mary here in terms of like why they drafted him but athleticism wise he scored 70.34 in terms of explosiveness 84.32 when it comes to speed and 90.26 when it comes to 
flexibility for his size. Um, this is a very superficial reading of cornerback evaluation, uh, where lots of NFL teams, they like to draft corners that have long arms and they're athletic for their size. But the problem exists when you take guys that are athletic and have size who don't have production and are very old for their size. You know, Richard Sherman has a lot of things you can say about him, but he was productive in college. And this is actually Brian Allen versus Richard Sherman. Just so we can get that out of the way, he's not Richard Sherman. He's more athletic than Richard Sherman was coming out. But again, indicators point more towards production than it comes to athleticism in certain cases. And uh, there is not a lot of cornerbacks who aren't productive, who have good athleticism that become special players. It's usually the inverse, where you have guys that are not super duper athletic, but are very productive that end up becoming special players that they have certain traits. Uh, so Brian Allen, I think it's a pick that's really isn't gonna pan out for you guys that much. I think he was strictly taken to kind of be like the Seahawks, to kind of try that thing out and see how that works to take a tall corner with length. But from an age perspective and from a production standpoint, I just think that this is just not gonna work out for you guys. So um, that's the only thing about that pick I can say. And a final point, and then uh, you also took, for the next pick, you took uh, Colin Holba, a long snapper. I don't do long snapper data stuff, so I can't really speak much on him. But the last player I can speak on, which is Keon Adams, uh, defensive end slash 3-4 line or outside linebacker uh, from uh, Western um, uh, Michigan. Uh, and in terms of him, in terms of production, he scored 80.28 in terms of solo tackle market share, 77.51 when it comes to sack market share, 95.02 when it comes to tackle for loss market share. He's very productive when it comes to uh, MAC competition. He scored a very good score for that level of competition, so you got some positives there. His issues stem from with athleticism. He only had 77.20 in terms of... Uh, well, 77.70 when it comes to explosiveness, 69.05 when it comes to speed, and 47.29 when it comes to flexibility for his size. This is not a player that I would expect to become a high-quality pass rusher, but here's what I will say. His, he has above-average explosiveness, he's above-average speed, and he has very good production, even from coming from his level of competition. So I think there's enough positives here Keon Adams could become a long-term starter for the Steelers um, in some capacity, either as an outside linebacker who rushes or as a defensive end. So I think there's enough positives here to say that he could do that uh, for the Steelers. But at the same time, I, again, high-quality outcomes are just off the table when it comes to him based on uh, his athleticism, uh, specifically his flexibility for his size. Um, so that's the only big thing that hurts him. But production, everything else is solid, so I would not worry about that. And I think he's a good pick. I think in terms of finishing the draft off, it's it's we end on a high note, I guess, when it comes to the Steelers. Uh, so how do I feel about this draft? Well, I think you got a high quality player in T.J. Watt. I think when it comes to wide receiver, Juju Smith-Schuster, I think has the potential to be a starter. I think Cam Sutton has the potential to be a starter. I think James Conner even has the potential to be a starter. I think Kellen Adams has the potential to be a starter. Um, again, I'm not so hot about Josh Dobbs. I'm not so hot when it comes to Brian Allen. I'm not so hot when it comes to Colin Holbo because I just don't do long snapper stuff, so I can't really say. But from a data perspective, uh, those five players that I mentioned before are players that did well in terms of production, did well in terms of age, and also did well when it came to athleticism uh, with the exception of Cam Sutton. Um, so... You got a lot of guys that were above average athletic, and you also got some guys that were productive and athletic. I think there's going to be some good things from this draft class. I don't think you maximize value 100% in terms of the draft, but if you just, again, want the data perspective of this class, I think there was a good a number of picks that I think are going to be successful players at the next level. It's just there's only one guy who's a high quality player but that's a lot better than other teams so keep that in mind so if this was an actual grade I usually grade based on uh, you know how you did compared to other teams and, and the Steelers are by they're not the worst team as a drafter so uh, but yeah I, I would say this is a good draft compared to other drafts uh, but I do think that you definitely took some picks that I think are not going to pan out that well long term like Josh Jobs and Brian Allen 
Um, so you could have done better. But I do think that you got enough good things from this draft to, for it to be a successful draft. Uh, so again, my name is James Coburn. Uh, you can follow my work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Gemetrix. Uh, leave a comment if you have any questions. Uh, also, like and subscribe if you want more content like this. If you just really, really need more content like this, uh, the best way you can help me out is again liking and, sub and subscribing. You know, liking kind of tells me if you like the videos or not, uh, and subscribing just helps me in terms of getting you know more people to watch this you know watch this channel and watch this work I do so uh, again uh, and also share you know if you have friends family whatever that are uh, really into the draft and, and don't really know much about the data side of things you know feel free to share this with them you know uh, and do that sort of thing so uh, again uh, I, I thank you guys so much for uh, listening to the show uh, I will be you know doing another video pretty soon on here so Keep a lookout for another video coming soon on another draft class. And uh, yeah, see you guys later. Peace.